Hello, I'm Oscar from The Coding Universe and it is great to be back. Today I'm going to talk about rendering. This is going to be the third installment of the Beginners OpenGL video series and um, let's get going. So this video is going to be split into two parts. In this part I'll cover the theoretical basis and in the next video I'll look into the actual OpenGL functions. So. Um, I'm going to start off with some terminology, some old terminology, and also some new words. Then I'm going to give you uh, an overview of the OpenGL rendering pipeline. And lastly, I'll have a more close look at the vertex stage and fragment stage. Terminology. Let's start with rendering. <laughs> what is that? A rendering is the process of drawing objects. There's really not much else to say about that. Okay, then uh, points and vertices. Now, do you remember the difference between points and vertices? Uh, if you don't, let me tell you. So a point is just a location in a coordinate system, whereas a vertex is the intersection. It is an intersection in a shape. So let's say you have a triangle. A triangle has three vertices. Um, and all these vertices are at certain points. But I'm not going to confuse you anymore. Let's head, uh, <laughs> let's head right to the uh, fragments. So, fragments, what is that? Uh, fragments is pixel-specific data generated from surrounding vertices. What that means is, um, let's say you have a triangle with three vertices. Each of them has a different color. You have green right here. Uh, red in the bottom right and blue on top then the fragment is one of these one of these pixels and what I mean by generated from surrounding vertices is uh, well you can see the fragment doesn't really have its own color that color is derived from the color of the neighboring vertices so for example the fragments right here are very green because they're close to the green vertex and the fragments right here are very blue because they're close to the blue vertex. Now that, um, so looking what color the fragment should have is called interpolation. And I'll talk more about that later. But first let's move to primitive shapes. A primitive shape in OpenGL is, is just a basic shape. So for example, <clears throat> there are triangles lines and points and there are also triangle strips which are um, just smart combinations of triangles. What I'm trying to say here is if you have a very complex shape you need to break that down into primitive shapes in order to draw it in OpenGL. You can't just say draw a house for me you have to say draw those triangles at those coordinates for me. Now a client and a server. Okay, the reason why we differentiate between these two in OpenGL is because they they do different things and are run on different processors mostly. The client is the program from which OpenGL functions are called. So if for example you use C to write an OpenGL program or Java, then the C or Java code is the client code, and that's the client side of your OpenGL program. And then the server is the program that interprets and executes these function calls. And the server usually resides in the GPU of your computer, in the graphical processing unit, but not necessarily so. Now why am I telling you this? It sounds logical. Um, well, it's because you can actually change what the server does using the shader language. So with the introduction of modern OpenGL came the programmable pipeline which allowed you to change how vertices and fragments are processed in a more flexible way. So you can actually write programs for the server using a programming language and you can write your own code in the client code. I know that's confusing but it's just how it is.
Okay, so let's have a look at this um, slightly simplified version of the OpenGL pipeline. Basically, we start with vertices that uh, make up this triangle, and we end with the green triangle. So in the beginning, what do we supply? We being the client. We supply vertices, as you can see, these three vertices right here. And we also supply attributes to these vertices. The colors, for example, I'm going to say all of these vertices are green. Now, we may also supply matrices. Uh, if you don't know what matrices are yet, don't worry, uh, we'll encounter that in probably the next part of this video, but don't worry about it for now. Now, OpenGL, okay, the server, then does the vertex processing in the so-called vertex program, vertex shader. So in vertex processing, you take that vertex that was sent to you by the client code, and you then use those attributes to generate a final vertex. And that final vertex is sent to the second stage, primitive assembly, um, to assemble the primitive shapes. So for example, we have these three um, original vertices right here. They get processed. In this case, nothing really changes. Uh, but here, a shape is assembled with those vertices, a triangle. And then that shape is broken in, uh, is broken down into fragments. And those fragments go to the third stage, the fragment stage, where OpenGL, the server, does the fragment processing. Now, um, you may also supply textures or lighting parameters in this stage from the client code. Uh, but in this case, the triangle doesn't do either of those two things. Uh, what it does do is compute the final color of the fragments. And you may do this using color interpolation, as I talked about here. Right, so you can see the, the fragments. This is how they calculate the color. So now in text, we have three rendering stages. To start off, there is the vertex stage, um, using the vertex shader, which is the program, as I said, that you can uh, uh, that you can program yourself. The vertex stage combines vertex data into the final vertex and passes data to the pixel stage. Then there's primitive assembly or shape assembly which assembles a shape from these final vertices and constructs the pixels, the fragments of a shape. And lastly, there is the pixel stage using the fragment shader, which may use interpolated data from the vertex stage and um, parameters from the client and also produces the final pixel color. Now, actually, after the fragment stage, there are a bunch of other stages, but the reason I'm not covering them is one that would be <laughs> that would take way too much time, and two you can't really change what they do um, using shaders. So, for example, you have now um, I should tell you that there are a lot more stages than these three, and in fact, uh, so, and in fact, after the fragment stage has been uh, has been done. I think there are like 10 other stages, but these are the, the three most important ones. Okay. So to summarize, you should be familiar with the following, uh, the following terminology. Point, vertex, primitive shape, fragment, client and server. And you should now be aware of the fact that OpenGL has three main stages for rendering. There is first the vertex stage, then the primitive assembly, and lastly the fragment stage. In part two, I will cover OpenGL code necessary for rendering. Should you have any questions or remarks, 
you can contact me through my email. You can uh, send me a, a tweet. You can add me on Skype or you can simply leave a comment below this YouTube video. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.